Tamil Nadu's principal opposition party, the AIA DMK, is heading for a split in its Golden Jubilee year. Former Chief Minister E.K. Palaniswamy, or EPS, has taken full control of the party as the interim general secretary. His chief rival, O. Panir Selvam, has been expelled from the party. As you know, AIA DMK had adopted an innovative concept of uh, dual leadership after the death of Jayalalitha in December 2016. Accordingly, leaders of two warring factions, O. Panir Selvam, led by Panir Selvam and Palani Swami, were elected. They came together. And then OPS and EPS were elected coordinator and co-coordinator of the party. That was in, I think, in September 2017. After five years, on Monday, the party's top decision-making body, the General Council, which is dominated by Palani Swami supporters. So the General Council abolished the posts of coordinator and co-coordinator and reverted to single leadership. So Palani Swami is the single leader now the interim general secretary. OPS has, however, uh, claimed that he remains the AIDMK coordinator and has declared Palaniswami's expulsion. So EPS expels OPS and OPS expels EPS. That's how it goes. OPS's contention has been that the general council could not take up the issue of single leadership without the consent of the coordinator, that is OPS. So the decision of the general council was illegal, he claims. So now the stage is set for a long legal battle. But as one says, the die is cast. Palani Swami has the support of an overwhelming majority of the 2500 strong general council and he is the party boss now. Panir Selvam has to start thinking of life outside the AIA DMK or he can form a splinter group of the party and you know, keep on fighting the legal battle. Before I begin to discuss what what these developments mean for the AIDMK's future, as also their implications for the BJP, which has big ambitions in Tamil Nadu. Let me give a brief background to those who might not be watching Tamil Nadu developments so closely. So after Jalalitha's death in December 2016, Paneer Selvam was made the chief minister, but Jalalitha's close aide, her confidante, Sasikala, had her own plans. So days after OPS was sworn in, the AIDMK General Council appointed her, Sasikala, the AIDMK General Secretary, the top party post which Jalita had held. After taking control of the party, Sasikala actually decided to take control of the government too. She wanted to become the Chief Minister. So she got the party MLAs to choose her, the AIDMK legislature party leader. In fact, she enjoyed so much cloud then that it was OPS, the Chief Minister himself, who proposed her name as a legislature party leader. Basically, paving the way for her to replace him. OPS then submitted his resignation to the governor. That was in fe February 2017. Within a couple of days though, OPS turned hostile. So, while Sasikala was waiting for her swearing-in ceremony, because she had already been made elected the legislature party leader, so she was waiting for a swearing-in ceremony, the Supreme Court upheld her conviction in a disproportionate assets case and she had to go to jail. She, however, ensured that her loyalist E.K. Palani Swami, or EPS, became the chief minister, replacing Panir Selvam. Now, look at the ways of politicians. While she was in jail, OPS and EPS joined hands and expelled her. The two then arrived at a power-sharing arrangement, with OPS becoming the coordinator of the party and deputy chief minister, while chief minister Palani Swami became the co-coordinator. This power-sharing formula of dual leadership continued for five years until Palani Swami decided to get rid of OP, OPS or to until Palani Swami decided to get full control of the party, which happened on Monday. That's the background of what happened on Monday. The next round of this power tussle uh, will be in courts where Sasikala's petition challenging her expulsion is also pending. Anyway, not, notwithstanding uh, what happens in the court battle, the crisis in the AI DMK isn't going to blow over anytime soon. If you recall, when MJ Ramchandran had broken away from the DMK and founded Anna Dravida Munetra Kazagam, which later became AIA DMK after adding All India, that was in 1972, he was a matinee idol. As you know, Karunanidhi, uh, then uh, DMK president, he had suspended MJ, in fact, prompting uh, him to form his own party. And if you go back to history, you know, MGR, who was a 
treasurer of the party then he had wanted the party of his brothers to declare their assets and that had really triggered karunanidhi and you know he said that mg are trying to question the integrity of the office bearers anyway i'm not going to go that that far in the past what i'm saying is when mg are was suspended by karunanidhi he enjoyed so much popularity so young man from udhamalpet set himself on fire that was his popularity again 15 years later in 1987 when mg are died there was a succession battle between his widow janaki ramchandran and uh, mg are's protege jalalita it went on for about a couple of years before jalalita got the better of her rival in 1989 uh, assembly election i think in that election although the aidmk did not win but the jalalita faction if i am not wrong jalalita faction got about uh, 27 seats or probably more and janaki ramchandran's faction got about 2 that was the end of it uh, janaki ramchandran uh, quit politics in fact the two factions actually merged anyway that's history MGR and Jalalita had succeeded in their ventures because they were popular film stars with a huge fan following. Today, neither EPS nor OPS had any such fan following. If at all, they are seen as leaders of, you know, Gounders and Thevers, the two communities that form the backbone of the AIADMK. Or that used to form, I would say, because in the last election we saw uh, this vote bank actually shifting away partially. EPS OPS power tussle uh, can therefore you know uh, have serious implications for the AIDMK which is struggling in the absence of a charismatic leader amid all this drama in the Dravidian party its ally BJP seems to be doing a tight rope walk it is not inclined to take any side as of today if you recall it was the BJP that was instrumental in uniting the two factions of the AIDMK after Jayalalitha's death In fact OPS has uh, said that it was only at the behest of Prime Minister Narendra Modi that he agreed to merge his faction with the EPS's faction and join the government as deputy CM. In days leading to his expulsion from the AIDMK on Monday OPS was actively courting the BJP. But the Saffron party remained neutral. You go back a few days I was leading to uh, to this to his expulsion on the 23rd of June in fact when the general council had met. And that day OPS was booed and you know humiliated by EPS supporters at that general council meeting on that day on 23rd of june after that meeting in fact barely a couple of hours three hours after the meeting uh, bjp general secretary in charge of tamil nadu ct ravi and state bjp president anamalai they had called on eps and ops separately to seek support for nda's presidential nominee draupadi murmu the fact that ct ravi and anamalai first met eps and then ops was a clear message it was clear that the bjp acknowledged the primacy of eps in the aidmk's organizational setup earlier uh, you know bjp mla nayana nagendran i mean he had supported the unitary leadership or eps's eps faction single leadership idea saying that you know uh, the aidmk needs a good leader who is efficient and deserving of the two again when draupadi murmu filed her nomination papers Panir Selvan made it a point to fly down to Delhi to be present. I mean, he was trying to, you know, uh, be more. Uh, he was trying to basically court the BJP leadership uh, or to get the BJP leadership support in his uh, battle or the power tussle with the EPS. But then, when he came to Delhi, hoping that he would be meeting the top leadership of the BJP, I mean, they didn't oblige. I mean, he could not get an appointment with either Modi or Amit Shah. It was a kind of snub and a clear indication. that the bjp was reconciled to eps becoming the aidmk single leader that the bjp was preparing to break bread with him while ops was courting the bjp enthusiastically the bjp chose to silently watch the aidmk's internal warfare now that palani swami is the leader of the aidmk it's a interim general secretary how do it play out for the bjp while eps had cooperated with the bjp leadership all through his chief ministerial tenure he was no pushover if you recall uh, months before the assembly election the bjp had planned that uh, well yatra the state wide well yatra but the palanisami government had denied permission i mean leading to a lot of heartburn in the bjp camp then uh, you know the bjp was in favor of a rapprochement with sasikala and her nephew ttv dinakaran uh, in the assembly election last year but eps won't have it 
let me give you another example why he is not a pushover. You know, after the assembly election, if you recall, the Shan Mugham was one of the first leaders that was last year to blame the BJP for the AIA DMK's defeat. And I recall what he said that, you know, the BJP alliance affected the minority votes completely. That was what Shan Mugham had said. What happened after that? I mean, recently Palana Swami got the AI DMK to nominate Shan Mugham to the Raj Sabha. I won't call it a reward, but then you know what, who, whose language Shan Mugham was speaking last year. I'm giving you these examples just to drive home the point that Palani Swami is no pushover, as I said. He always played hardball with the BJP, even though OPS was soft towards the Saffron Party. So in May, uh, you know, AIDMK Organizational Secretary uh, C. Panayan accused the BJP of trying to grow at the expense of the AIADMK. I mean, he said that, you know, the BJP's growth is not good for the AIADMK or for Tamil Nadu or Dravidian po policies. You know, and then OPS sought to distance the AIADMK from Panayan's remark, saying that, you know, it was his personal view. But EPS came out in support of Panayan when the BJP criticized him. Another example that I can give you, uh, you know, when the AIADMK General Council met on the 23rd, 23rd of June, the agenda of the meeting included, among others, commendation of PMOD over the nationwide or for the nationwide COVID vaccination program. That was put on the agenda at, the, at OPS's insistence. But the General Council, dominated by EPS loyalists, as we have seen over the last two meetings of the General Council, so the council rejected that, uh, you know, uh, that part. So no commendation for PM Modi. And then later on, AIDMK leaders would tell you that what was the need for the AIDMK to commend uh, the prime minister for uh, this COVID vaccination program. It was a party internal affair. Besides all this, you know, what must also bother the BJP is the fact that Palani Swami camp is wary of the BJP's ambitions in Tamil Nadu. I mean, leaders in uh, EPS camp uh, told my colleague, Swami Arliya, that they wanted to continue the alliance until the 2024 Lok Sabha election, so as to benefit from PM Modi's appeal. And uh, you can check out uh, Swami's article on this, is reported on this in our, on our website, the dilemma that the AIDMK leaders are facing. Even though they're not happy with the BJP, they would like to go with the BJP in the Lok Sabha elections at least. But that was before all these developments happened. Today, one doesn't know how things will unfold in coming weeks and months. The fact is there has been no chief minister from a national party after 1967. The last one was from uh, the Congress, M. Uh, Bhaktavaslam. And please don't mind if I'm pronouncing the name incorrectly. I always just struggle with pronunciations, you know, be it Tamil, Hindi, English, French. I mean, that's a problem. Anyway, coming back to the subject, the fact is neither the DMK nor the AIA DMK has shown any willingness to give a space to a national party in Tamil Nadu. I mean, all these decades. And this alliance with the BJP is a bit tricky for the AIDMK. The AIDMK is already facing heat from the DMK, which has been playing regionalism and sub-nationalism card, and often often uh, raking up center versus Tamil Nadu narratives. The Modi government's cussed refusal to engage in a dialogue with the states, be it on the farm laws, NEET, ZE, or CUET, I mean, that refusal to engage with the states makes life more difficult for the BJP's regional allies. The AIADMK's equations with the BJP are, in fact, are likely to strain progressively, given how the EPS camp has been seeking to keep a distance, a distance from the National Party. So what are the BJP's options in Tamil Nadu now? If and when, and I stress on this, if and when, EPS decides to uh, distance his party from BJP. The BJP has the option of allying with OPS and bring Sasikala and Dinakaran also under the umbrella. And this is a hypothetical uh, scenario I'm talking about, but still we are talking about the BJP options. Then Annamalai, uh, a gounder like EPS, I mean, he can hope to win over the community in the, the, the gounders in the western part. And if the BJP has OPS and Sasikala under its umbrella, it can also hope to woo Thevers in the southern part. Add to it Modi's fan club, howsoever small, and those uh, who are kind of disillusioned with Dravidian politics. And the BJP's prospects in Tamil Nadu don't look so bad. But that's if everything falls in place 
in that hypothetical scenario I'm talking about. But for that, even that to happen, the BJP must first shed its image in Tamil Nadu as a Hindi heartland party with uniformity as its core agenda. Modi and Shah are known to create opportunities in adversities you have seen all around in every state. For all we know, they may be seeing a scope for a national party to fill in the opposition's space in Tamil Nadu. In the event of, uh, say, the AIADMK vacating that space. But there are many imponderables. What if the AIADMK, led by a single leader, EPS, bounces back, comes back, comes out stronger? Or uh, what if another Dravidian party, say, uh, Siemens and TK, it jumps in to fill the space, the vacant space, if at all? Imponderables apart, I mean, for now, the BJP would like to keep Palaniswami in good humor until the 2024 Lok Sabha election at least. That's all from me in this episode of Politically Correct. Thanks for watching.